So as an animator, I've, I've read, uh, you know, you, you used to read Poor Dad, Rich Dad before this whole thing came about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I read all about yeah, what yeah. you did at Forbes. I had to do that Forbes. I didn't go to business school. <laughs> when I started a business, I had to like read like those like books that tell you how business works. <laughs> And uh, I'm really curious, how does it feel to go from there where you didn't know what was going to happen? If you didn't know where this journey, you know, yeah. going from Beavis and Butthead, from being freelance yeah. to making an empire. How, how, I mean, what was it like at the initial stages before this all came together? Were you worried that something would go wrong or did you have some money I, saved I up? I didn't have money. Yeah. The, uh, uh, you know, I didn't really have a plan, so I wasn't worried because I wasn't, I didn't have a goal. You know, it just kind of happened. I just kept doing freelance work and getting more and then hire a couple friends, do a bigger job, you know, do another job. And then, you know, then uh, then before you know it, it's a studio. Yeah. Uh, I was a huge, I, I think Beavis and Butt Do America is the funniest animated movie of all time. Yeah, for you. I like it. I, uh, it's really I many aspects yeah. of that movie. I directed like a sequence where they trip on peyote, but I also storyboarded and did layouts on it too. So uh, that was a real quick movie. Entire, in one year from like script to screen, that movie, like really fast. I've read uh, you knew Mike Judge before he was Mike Judge. Tell us about that. Well, no, I mean, I knew him when he was Mike Judge, you know, when we were working on, on I came on during season four of Be Visit Bud, so it was already, it was already a hit by that point. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's a cool dude. How excited are you about Big Mouth? Great, it's on, it's on today. Now it's up on Netflix. Uh, you can binge watch it if you want, right now. You have Netflix, I don't know if you guys have heard of that, Netflix. Where does the origin of the bucket hat come from? You know, I don't know. It's just this dumb hat. I started I started wearing it. I had like a Budweiser ones and Marlboro ones, and then it was harder to get them on eBay, so I got a couple of these custom ones printed out to say Tib Mouse Super on them cool. now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's no, I don't know, I thought it looked like a drunk uncle hat or something, <laughs> you know, like something not too serious. And for those who have, you know, are just going to see Big Mouth for the first time, what can they expect? What, 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 how would you define it? You know, you know, I think it's like it goes beyond what you might think it is. Like, I think a lot of people on the surface might think it's just like a lot of dirty jokes. But I think what what really makes, sets it apart is that I, it's got really heartfelt characters and characters you care about, and it really is about their their journey going through puberty, not just about. Uh, you know, dick jokes. There's something I'm actually curious about for you since, you know, you you did traditional animation rather than 3D and all that kind of stuff. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about like kids growing up without like, you know, Bambi or, or whatever you want, or Run and Stimpy or all that kind of traditional kind of... In TV, you know, there's still a lot of 2D animation. Oh, you mean like without drawing on pieces of yeah. paper? Yeah, I it's mean, all CGI. Now, now we draw it on Cintiq screens, so yeah. it's still drawing, and still, uh, I think there's considerably more 2D animation in TV. Obviously, feature films, 3D is like really taking over, and we do. I think maybe I'm trying to think of we we got two CG shows in production now, so we do a little bit of CG and do CG commercials, but um, yeah, it's all art. I mean, it's like whatever, like. Photography didn't displace like illustration, so I don't yeah. think like like realistic CG will will displace like cartoony, silly cartoony drawings. You know, Th does hand drawn take longer than CGI, or does CGI cost more? I've, I've always been curious. Depends, you know, it depends on the scope of the project, right? Because it's like CG requires a lot more setup. You got to like model and texture and build everything. But then once it's built. You know, then it moved, then it goes faster. Uh, and, you know, depending on the render sizes and stuff like that, or like, you know, the, how complex the scene is, how many characters there are, stuff like that. So I think you can get through, you can do a quick joke in 2D a lot, a lot quicker. And the last thing I'm going to say is yeah. do you spend most of your time in LA these days still, or I do. New York? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have multiple studios. Yes, LA, yeah. I mean, I'm here, you know, a few times a year and, and uh, up in Vancouver a few times a year, but uh, yeah, mostly LA. Keep them in check? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah.